welcome. You're tuned into Rooted Digital, that is Rooted Fellowship's online community portal. And we are super stoked that you're joining us for yet another one of our Advent series sessions. It's exciting, it's an exciting time to be alive as we reflect on and remember um, who Jesus is and what God did through him. Pretty exciting stuff. Again, I'll double click on that a little later on. Let me first be uh, courteous and introduce myself. I am Pinky Mukwena and I have the privilege of being our host this morning. I have totally, totally enjoyed the last few weeks where um, different, different elders and pastors have just been inundating us with the gospel message of Advent. We always say that Rooted Fellowship is about three things and these three things are our anthem, if you'll call it, and that is that we are gospel-centered, deeply in that one we are disciple making and we are a transcultural community fascinating stuff if you want to hear more about those head on over to our website rootedfellowship.com and just double click on whatever it is you'd like to know more about and also on our website is information on how you can partner with us and be a part of our giving community we're a very generous church i always say that this is because so much has been given to us um, by god through jesus and so it's our delight to give amongst each other in the church and that's exciting stuff uh, but also if you have a need and you'd like for the church to stand with you and support you please do not hesitate to send us an email on community at rootedfellowship.com someone will be in touch with you if it is prayer you need or whatever it is in this season we are here to stand together that's what we're about um, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we're in a series on Advent um, exciting where just man the messages that we've just been getting these last few weeks have been incredible um, and I loved the last few weeks on transitions from chaos to peace and a whole lot others you can go back to our messages if you didn't catch those ones today is no different friends um, Sikhle one of our resident pastors um, is going to be sharing with us this morning on brokenness to healing so that is something i'm definitely waiting for i think we've probably known quite a share of brokenness in this world and it's encouraging to know that god meets us exactly where we are so stay tuned Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. And joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love <clears throat> no Noel, Noel, born is the King of Israel. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. Advent! Of all the seasons in the church calendar, 
Advent probably feels the most familiar. As Christians, Advent helps us deconstruct and deny the unhelpful stories that we find ourselves caught up in, especially those connected to our culture's concept of Christmas, which is oftentimes filled with individualism and consumerism. Instead, we get to reconstruct and embrace the true story of the gospel in our lives. We recognize the weight of sin and brokenness personally, corporately and cosmically, and we see with clear eyes our need for Jesus. Advent shows us how the light of the birth of Christ appeared against a backdrop of darkness, depravity and despair. This is why our Advent theme for 2020 is one of King Jesus breaking into the darkness, despair, chaos and brokenness. We cannot rush to celebrate the arrival of Jesus without staring the darkness and despair that he comes to heal us from in the face. 2020 has been a hard year for all of us and Advent helps us to take stock of that and also helps lead us to celebrate the eternal hope that we have in the arrival of King Jesus to usher in a new kingdom. We will be drawing these themes of darkness, despair, chaos and brokenness from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms has been described as the anatomy of the soul because it represents all of our human emotions. It is honest and yet redemptive. We pray that the Advent series will be a blessing to all our Rooted Fellowship family. Tis the season. Blessings. Hey Rooted Fellowship, um, it's good to be with you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sihe, one of the church planters here at Rooted Fellowship. I have a privilege of leading a church plant in the east of Johannesburg called Renewal Fellowship. Um, it's a great privilege for me to bring God's word um, to you uh, today. We're continuing with our series in Advent. If you've been tracking with us, you will know that we've been doing a series on Advent. And Advent, uh, what it means is, I think other guys have sort of explained this, but I'll, I'll do it again. Advent simply means appearing or it means arrival. And we are talking ab about it in terms of uh, the arrival of Jesus we use a countdown uh, to Christmas. So we've taken these four Sundays uh, counting down to Christmas to talk about um, what does it mean for Jesus to come. Um, and we looked at the, at, the, at the backdrop in which Jesus comes uh, to rescue us from. We looked at the subject of, of, of um, darkness. I think if you remember the first uh, sermon in this series on a priest, a sermon on on darkness, uh, moving from darkness to light, Jesus bringing us light in our darkness. And then we looked at despair, um, despair, and then Jesus bringing us to hope. And then last week, uh, Stephen uh, taught on, um, on chaos, Psalm 46, looking at chaos, and then bringing us, Jesus bringing us peace. And today we are looking at Psalm 69, looking at Psalm 69, looking at brokenness. Uh, to wholeness, that we are broken, but Jesus comes to bring us, to bring us this healing, this wholeness in our lives. So we're going to be in, 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 in Psalm 69. Because it's a long psalm, I'm actually going to read from verse uh, 13 to verse 21, um, and then we'll focus actually in one verse, um, but also just bring out the whole psalm into that verse. So I want to read for us uh, Psalm 69. If you've got a Bible, it'd be great to, to uh, bring it with you just so you can go along. Psalm 69 verse 13 to verse 21. Let me read for us. It says, But as for me, Lord, my prayer to you is for a time of favor. In your abundant faithful love, God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the miry mud. Don't let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and from the deep water. Don't let the flood waters sweep over me or the deep swallow me up. Don't let the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, for your faithful love is good. In keeping with your abundant compassion, turn to me. Don't hide your face from your servant, for I am in, in distress. Answer me quickly. Come near to me and redeem me. Ransom me because of, of my enemies. You know my, my insults. I, I, you know the insults I endure, my shame and disgrace. You are aware of all my adversaries. 
insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. I waited for sympathy, but there was none, for comforters, but found no one. Instead, they gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray now as you open up your word, that by your spirit, you will point us to your son, that your word will encourage us, that your word will build us up in the faith. Uh, Strengthen us, we pray. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, we're zooming on, on, on Psalm 69, and I want to zoom in on, in fact, this, uh, uh, this verse, verse 20, which says, insults have broken my heart, and I am in despair. I waited for sympathy, but there was none for comforters, but found no one. Insults have broken uh, my heart. I want to talk about the subject of a broken heart a broken heart, or a crushed spirit, looking at that Jesus comes to bring us wholeness in our brokenness. Talking about this subject of a broken heart or a broken spirit or a crushed spirit. Now, the Bible, when it talks about the word heart, it talks about it not necessarily to talk about this this thing that pumps blood in 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 our bodies, which is how sometimes we use the word heart, but he's talking about in, an, in, a, in a holistic, in a broad sense, uh, talking about the, your inner person. Um, you know, it, it includes different things. It includes uh, your, your you say components of your soul, your mind, emotions, and will, your inner person. The Bible uses that to, to say that's your heart. I mean, I'll give an example. Uh, Jesus talked to his Pharisees and he says, why are you thinking evil thoughts in your hearts? You say you're thinking evil thoughts in your hearts. He's using it differently to say you are thinking evil thoughts within yourself, in your in your heart. And in the book of John, John, in Jesus says, "Don't be troubled. I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice. Your inner person will rejoice." So the Bible is using the word heart to describe your inner person. So even with us today, when we're talking about your broken heart, we're not talking necessarily about. Uh, like a romantic uh, situation or a broken relationship, although it may include that, but we're talking about a crushed heart. We're talking about a crushed spirit. That within, you, within yourself, your inner person, you are crushed, you are broken, and that's what the, boy, the Bible talks about when it talks about the broken heart. Now, most of us, we know that you live long in this world. You live long in this world. You will experience pains and aches you know you just live long in this world you know you will experience aches and pains we live in a broken world and we experience brokenness we experience brokenness outside of us uh, with the things we see across the world uh, things like suffering things like diseases uh, viruses pandemics these are the things that show us that our world is broken poverty all of those things that we see man this is this is because of the broken world so that's brokenness outside of us but also we, this brokenness that is within us, um, our inclination to sin. That's because of the brokenness that, within, that is within us, our, our, the, the, the physical uh, stuff that we, that, we, that we face, sickness, uh, um, distress, uh, dysfunctionalities within our lives. All of these things, that are, this, is the, this is the result of the broken world, the brokenness within us. There's brokenness outside of us and there's brokenness within us. Now, with physical aches and pains, like, like headaches, like a, like a toothache, with all of these things that's, that's physical, we know exactly what to do with that. If I have a headache, if I have a, a backache, all of these things, I know I need a, a medication. I know I need to see a doctor. I can detect it easily because of the pain, and then I know exactly what to do with that. But what do we do with emotional aches and pains? What do we do with aches and pains of the heart, aches and pains of the inner man, aches and pains of the soul. What do we do with those? I think it was uh, Whitney Houston who said, um, where do broken hearts go? Don't ask me how I know I know that song. I just, I just know it. It says, where do broken hearts go? And, and I think that's, that's sort of the, the, the main theme of this psalm. The psalmist here says, Everything that is happening around me has broken my heart, has broken my spirit, has crushed my spirit. Now again, 
We're talking about a broken heart. We're not talking about a uh, romantic relationship heartbreak. Uh, again, but it, it can include that. That can cause a broken spirit. But we are talking about in a broader sense, a crushed spirit, a broken soul. Now, a broken heart or broken, a crushed spirit can be caused by a loss of a person, a loss of a loved one. It can be caused by a loss of something important to you. It can be caused by um, just, you know, expectations not met. It could be caused by a betrayal that you find yourself in. It can be caused by a disappointment, a deep disappointment. It can be caused by a dream that has not been fulfilled. That now you are crushed in your spirit. The Bible takes this issue of a broken heart or a crushed spirit very seriously. You see it all over the scriptures. That is something that is serious, is something that we need to attend to. In fact, Proverbs 18 verse 14 says, The spirit of a man can endure sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Listen to these words again. Proverbs 18 verse 14, it says, The spirit of a man can endure sickness. We can endure being physically sick, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear that? Now, this, those words are saying, actually, what we face within is actually more uh, hard than what we face physically. And we are looking at this verse in this psalm today, where this psalmist, David, is experiencing some sort of a heartbreak, some sort of, a, of an emotional uh, crushing of the spirit. He says in verse 20, insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. Now, I might have to give a, a little bit of context of what's happening. Why is this psalmist uh, broken in his heart? Now, uh, David here, it says in, 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 our, in, the, in the subscription of the psalm, the, for the choir director, according to the lilies of David. This is the psalm of David. David was going through this. He's suffering in the hands of his enemies. I mean, we will see that over and over again, talking about that the enemies are coming from, for him. And he says here, it's not because of the crime he has done. It's not something that he has done, but it's because of the zeal of the house of God. And we'll see that later in the psalm. It's, he's getting all of these uh, pushback because of the zeal of the house of God. And he cries out to God to save him. He's crying out to God to save him. To save him. In verse 1 to 4, verse 1 to 4 opens up with a cry, with, with a lament of deliverance. Verse 1 says, Save me, O God, for the water has risen, has risen to my neck. He feels like he's sinking. He feels like he's sinking. That's what we, we, we get to see at the beginning of the psalm, a, a cry, a lament. And then from verse 5 to 12, we see his honesty, his humility as he pours out his heart of what is happening. He's saying, God, you know my foolishness and my guilt acts are not hidden from you. He confesses what's happening. But his primary concern is that God is not defamed. His primary concern is that God is not defamed or his people are not discouraged. He confesses that he knows. He knows he's not perfect. With all of these things that are happening in him, with all of these enemies coming for him, he's not perfect at all. And then from verse 13 to verse 16, we see this prayer, this prayer that is full of hope. But as for me, Lord, my prayer to you is for a time of favor. In your abundant faithful love, God, answer me with your sure salvation. We see this prayer of hope is grounded in the character of God. He knows who God is. Now, I, I need to do a side note here that we need to understand the attributes of God. You need to understand the character of God. And that is something we see again and again in the Psalms. When the psalmist is faced with difficulty, they always remember the character of God. There's nothing like suffering, but at the, at the same time, you don't know who God is. You don't know what God has promised. You don't know the character of God. And I will say, do study that. Who, who God is, his attributes, his perfections, because they're helpful when we go through sufferings and in verse 22 to verse 29 he pleads for justice for his for his enemies he's asking god may he punish his 
enemies. He's pleading that justice may be done. And then in verse 32, verse 38, he ends with a celebration and praise. He ends with a celebration and praise. And that's how this psalm is structured. That's how we, it, it goes. But again, we want to focus back on, on verse 20, looking at this subject of brokenness. Now, we're not going to get at every part of the psalm because it's a, it's a long psalm. It has 36 verses, um, you know, and, and it will take a lot of, of time to do that. But I do want to draw us into this uh, topic of the broken heart, the Jesus coming to heal us, to make us whole from this crushed spirit. Now, I want to do it in two ways. Firstly, we're going we're gonna to look at a, a diagnosis of a broken heart, and then we're going to look at the cure for the broken heart. The first one is the diagnosis of a broken heart. What does, what does it mean to be broken hearted? What does it look like? And then we will, we will see the cure of the broken heart. Now let's look at the diagnosis. Now in this Psalm specifically, David is crushed because of the enemies. He's crushed because of the enemies are lying about him. He says that in verse four, he says, those who hate me without cause, are numerous than the hairs of my head. My deceitful enemies who would destroy me are powerful. Though I did not steal, I must repay. Though I did not do anything, I must pay for these things. He's, he's, he's crushed because of the enemies that are, lying for him, that are lying about him, that are coming for him. But there's also indifference with his family and friends. He says that in, in, in other parts, that even his family and friends, they, they're not helping him. He's crushed. He's being persecuted for doing the right thing, for being zealous for the house of the Lord, but he's facing all of this difficulty and he's crushed. Attack from enemies, indifference from his family and friends, and all of these things, they cause him to have a crushed spirit. They cause him to have a broken heart. Now that's David. That's what we see in the psalm. Now what about us? What causes us a heartbreak? What causes us a crushed spirit, a broken heart? Let me just even get closer and say, what has shattered your heart? What has broken your heart? It could be something that has happened recently. It could be something that has happened way back. But what has crushed your heart? That he has made it hard. That you don't care anymore. That's what a crushed heart does. It, it, you get to a place where you don't care anymore. What has done that for you? Now again, we looked at the, the physical aches and pains. That for the, for the physical aches and pains in general, when you have a, a pain in, in one area, it adversely, it adversely impacts on another area. If you have a backache, I mean, you... If, if for those who might know or those who, who don't know, if you have, you have a backache and it's not attended, it affects different areas. If you have a backache, it affects how you sit. It affects how you sleep. But you don't deal with a sleeping issue. The issue is not that. The issue is your back. That's what needs to be attended to. When you have an issue somewhere else, you can have a pain somewhere else, but it affects something else. We know that physically. But also emotionally, in our crushed spirit, in our broken heart, our broken heart, when it's not attended, it will affect other areas of our lives. And sometimes we find ourselves dealing with those areas, but forgetting that actually the main cause is this broken heart, is this crushed heart. An attended broken heart will show up in different places. An attended broken heart it will show up in the way you, you do life, in, in your choices, in your decision making, in your relationships, in your faith in God. Maybe you used to trust God. You used to have this strong faith in God. But something has happened. It could be a shattered heart. It could be a crushed spirit. Now you are very careful. Now your trust in God has gone down. Listen, friends, 2020 has been hard for most of us. It's been difficult for most of us. Some of us probably lost a loved one, lost work, lost a business, lost a friendship, a relationship, maybe a marriage that is slipping away, lost our health, 
Maybe a dream again that didn't come to pass. The psalmist here, he says, insults have broken my heart. What is it for you? What is it that has broken your heart? What is it that you can say, this has crushed my spirit? And how is it showing up in your life? The thing is, with physical pain again, there's a sense that we can't ignore it. If I have a headache, I can't just, you know, shove it away. It's painful. I need to attend to it. I need to get something for it. I need to get help immediately. But with, with emotional pain, there's a sense that, you know, there's no rush. I can attend to this later. There's a sense that I can bear it. I can ignore it. I can shove it at the back of my mind and not attend to it. Sometimes not even detect it. Not even detect it. Only to find out that there are different things that are happening in my life. And that's because of a broken spirit, of a broken heart. Now, here are a few diagnostic things that, you know, elements that show that you have a crushed spirit. Maybe you're thinking, this got nothing to do with me. But let me just say a few, these few things that may maybe see if you have some sort of a crushed spirit. Maybe the first one, the zeal of the things of God has subsided. The, the zeal, you used to have a zeal for God's, for the kingdom of God, for doing things for God. Your zeal has subsided. What has happened? What has crushed that? What has happened? It could be a broken heart, a crushed spirit. The love for the people of God. You used to love community, but now you don't. Something has happened. What has crushed your spirit in that regard? The third one, it could be isolation. Again, that's connected with community. You don't want to be with people anymore. You are, sol- you are isolating yourself. Why? It could be a crushed spirit. It could be something that has happened that has crushed you. And now you are careful. Maybe for some of us, we are easily offended. We are easily offended. Sometimes that happens because of a bruise emotionally. Something that happened and it broke your heart. It hurt your heart. And it bruised you. And now when, few, when people say just few things, it, 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 it brings that back. Your bruise gets touched. You are easily offended because of a broken heart. It could be control or manipulation. You know, you've seen things go bad and now you want to control how things turn out. You've become a controlling person, a manipulating person. Why? Because of a broken spirit, a crushed heart. Now you want to control things. It could be despair. You found yourself, you've lost hope. Which is what actually we see with the psalmist. In verse 20 he says, Insults have broken my heart. I am in despair. That actually follows the broken heart. Despair follows a broken heart when you have lost hope. He says, I have a broken heart, but now I am in despair. What have you lost hope on? What is something that you feel it's never going to happen? You have lost hope on, on your marriage being healthy? on your finances getting better, on your life having order, have you lost hope in that? That would be because of a crushed spirit. It's another thing to be crushed in spirit. It's another thing to be in despair. You could have a crushed, you could be crushed in spirit because you lost a job. I lost my job. You're crushed in spirit. I'm never getting a job. That's despair. I've lost hope. I lost a relationship, you're crushed in spirit, I'll never be happy again. That's lost of hope, you are in despair. We need to be careful when we find ourselves in despair. Are you suppressing or ignoring that your spirit is crushed or your heart is broken? Have you not detected it? Or are you ignoring it? Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. It affects our physical physical life. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. 
Don't ignore it. Cry out to God, which leads to our second point. So the way it's just looking at what does a, a broken heart looks like, a diagnose, diagnosis, but now we're looking at the cure. I'm done. We are done with the bad news that sometimes we, we get a broken heart. We get a crushed spirit. And we should not ignore it because it leads to other things. But now let's look at how we can, it can, we can be cured. How can the scriptures, how can Jesus help us and make us whole again? Now, I need to say this as we look at the cure. That the scripture is clear that God draw, draws near to the brokenhearted. We know that from Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God is close to us. For some of us who, who face this, for some of us who have faced this before, God is, comes close to us. Now let's look at how this psalm, Psalm 69, specifically can help us in our brokenness. How does this psalm help us in our brokenness? First thing, for us to be cured, for us to, to come into this healing, Number one, we need to cry out to God, lament to God, which is what we see here from verse 1 to verse 4. The psalmist cries out to God, Save me, God, for the water has risen to my neck. I have sunk in deep mud, and there is no footing. I have come into deep waters, and flood sweeps over me. I am weary from my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. The psalmist cries out to God. He's honest about what's happening. He goes out to God with his pain. He's crying out. He's saying, I'm sinking. I'm overwhelmed. My enemies are powerful for me. He's being honest. That's the first thing. Get honest with God. Honestly express your emotions to God. That's one of the advantages of reading the Psalms. They help us with praying our emotions, praying our fears praying our guilt, praying our, 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 all of these things that we go through. God heals what you show him. Let me say that again. God heals what you show him. God can't help you when you are hiding. He can fix it if you can come out with it. God can fix it if you can come out with it. We see that even in Genesis. When Adam and Eve sinned, they hid from God. They hid from God because that's our natural response. We want to hide when we go through stuff. We want to hide from our Heavenly Father when things go bad. And God asked them, we remember in Genesis, God asked them, He says, Adam, where are you? It's not that God doesn't know where they were, where, they, where, where He was or where they were. He wants them to voluntarily come out. He wants them to, to, to voluntarily say, this is where we are. And for us today, God could be asking, are you brokenhearted? Not that he doesn't know, but he wants you to come out with it and say, God, I am brokenhearted. Heal me. God can fix it if you come out with it. Cry out to God and be honest with your broken heart, with your crushed spirit. That, Lord, I feel like giving up. That, Lord, uh, things have been difficult. My spirit is crushed. Things have happened. My spirit is crushed. I've lost this. My spirit is crushed. Take it to the Lord in prayer. So that's the first thing. Lament. Cry out to God. Second thing, be specific. Ask God to rescue you. Now, you might think that's the, that's, the first, that's the same as the first point, but actually it's not. It's, it's being specific. Ask God to rescue you. This is what we see with the psalmist. He's being specific. He's saying, God, rescue me. He's being honest, but at the same time, he's being specific. God, I'm not being generic here. I'm not just saying, Lord, heal me. I'm saying, Lord, Heal me from this broken heart. I have a crushed spirit. I'm becoming indifferent to stuff. I'm losing hope. Rescue me. 
ask God to rescue you. This is what we see in verse 13. He says, as for me, Lord, my prayer to you is for a time of favor. In your abundant faithful love, God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from this miry mud. Don't let me sink. He's being specific. He's being specific. Lord, rescue me. But thirdly, let go of any bitterness or any thoughts of vengeance, especially if there's something you've been wronged, which is what we see in the psalm. David has been wronged, and we see him literally just going off asking for justice. This is what we see in verse from verse uh, 18, where he says, uh, you know the insult I endure, my shame and disgrace. And then he goes talking about his enemies from verse 26. He says, for they persecute the one you struck and talk about the pain of those you wounded. Charge them with crime on top of crime. This is what is called the imprecatory Psalms, where we see uh, that David is going out saying, God, do this to my enemies. But as New Testament Christians, that's not our prayer. We suppose we are loving our enemies. But what that means for us is we need to come out with whatever we feel, whatever raw emotions that we feel about the situation, let going of our bitterness and any thoughts of vengeance and saying, Lord, you are the judge. Lord, you are the one who sits on the throne. You are the judge. For us, it is to forgive it is to let go things to God. God is the ultimate judge. So if you have a broken heart because of what's been done to you, someone has broken that heart, someone has come into your space and done that, one of the healing process is to give it to God. Let God handle it. He is the ultimate judge. Let go of any bitterness. But the fourth thing is, Praise God in your pain. Now that might sound like a, you know, a, a typical Christian thing to, to say. But this is so profound. Praising God in our pain. And, and, and the book of Job, or the, or the character of Job, is such an example to us in this. If you know the story of Job, Job lost everything. Job lost his family. He lost his, his, his resources, everything. And as that happened, Job said, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In my pain, I'm going to worship God. He continued and say, though he slay me, talking about God, though he slays me, yet will I hope in him. Praise God in your pain. And here's something about praise. Some, some of us might not know this. Here's something about praise. Praise is the means of grace. Praise is the, is the channel of God's grace into our lives. Sometimes we, we, we think when we sing, when we praise God, it is just for God. Yes, it is for God, but it's also for us. As we praise God, God is doing something in us and through us in praising Him. Don't neglect praise. Don't neglect worship. This is what we see in this psalmist. I mean, he's been talking about that he's, he's brokenhearted. But look at, what he say, look at what he says in verse 34. He says, let the heaven and earth praise him. Let the seas and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion and build up cities of Judah. They will live there and possess it. The descendants of his servant will inherit it. And those who love his name will live in it. He says in verse 32, the humble will see it and rejoice. You who seek God, take heart, for the Lord listens to the needy and does not despise his own who are prisoners. The psalmist ends his lament. He ends all of these things he's going through with a praise. Let heaven and earth praise him. Praise is a means of grace for us. Even in Psalm 42, the psalmist in Psalm 42, he says, Why are you cast down my soul, hope in God, yet will I praise him? I mean, having a privilege of, of, of preaching most of the time or being, enjo or, or being involved in pastoral ministry, there is nothing that touches my heart 
than seeing people uh, singing their lungs out, knowing that they're going through stuff. It encourages you. It encourages other believers. Here is someone you know they are going through the most, but they've got their hands up, sometimes tears rolling down, and they're praising God. Because that does something to us. Listen to what Lamentations 3 says. Lamentations 3 from verse 19. It says, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them. My soul is downcast within me. Yet, this I call to mind. And therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. That I knew every morning, great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. I will wait for him. Did you see what that person said? He said, I know my affliction. I know my wanderings. I remember them all. My soul is downcast. Yet will I remember this. Yet will I call this to mind, the Lord's great love. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That yet today, yet will I praise him. Yet will I call this to mind. That word yet makes all the difference in that. That person's yet is where you find that the changing of, of direction, knowing the steadfast love of God. I'm going through this, yet will I praise him. For us too, that yet should be a paradigm shift. It should arise is when uh, cancer is not cured, when debt is never decreased, when the questions are not answered, yet we will praise him. Yet we will believe that he is enough, that Jesus is still enough. Yet he's our prize. We will hope in God for God's sake alone. In the darkness, we will have a choice that is not really there in better times. We have a choice to choose to serve God just because he is God. If we do that, we are finally learning to love God for himself not for his benefits. That I'm going through pain, yet will I praise him, will I praise you because you are God. All, our, all of our laments, they actually lead to worship. They lead to praise because you are praising God for him. You are praising God for who he is. God, this is horrible. My spirit is crushed, yet I will praise my God for he alone is worthy. In your pain, praise God. In your pain, praise him. And that brings healing to us. But lastly, in your distress, in your broken heart, look to Jesus. In your broken heart, look to Jesus. This is why we're talking about Advent. That Jesus has come for us who are broken hearted. Jesus has come for us who are crushed in spirit. We will know Isaiah 61. This is the prophecy about Jesus. It talks about that Jesus will come. And in fact, Jesus quotes this in Luke 4. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring news, good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the freedom to the prisoners. Jesus saying, the Father has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus was sent by the Father to heal the brokenhearted. It's not some side ministry for Jesus. This is what he was sent to do, to heal the crushed in spirit. So when we celebrate Advent, when we come and looking at the arrival of Jesus, we are celebrating that the healer has come. That the physician has come, the physician for the brokenhearted. This is what he was sent for. And if you somehow are watching this or listening to this, and you don't have a relationship with God through Jesus, I would ask and plead to run to him. Because even 
with you, the broken heart will find you. It finds all of us. And where are you going to run to? We have a healer of the brokenhearted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him, run to him today. Firstly, he wants to give you a new heart if you don't know him. He wants to save you. He wants to make you right with God. Put your trust in him today and be saved. Put your trust in Jesus. He will heal. He will make you whole. He will draw you close to God. If you are a Christian and watching this, if you have crossed the line of faith, but you are crushed in spirit, you have lost hope, dreams have not come true, all of these things, they have crushed your soul, don't hide. Don't run away. Run to him as well. He's willing and he's able to heal a broken heart. He's willing and able to heal a broken heart. In fact, that is what the Father sent him for. He sent him to heal the broken heart. Trust him again. Trust Jesus again. He's the physician. He's the doctor. He's the one we go to for our emotional aches and pains. Trust him. The psalm points us to Christ. The psalm points us to the one who has come to heal the brokenhearted. If you're crushed in spirit today, this is for you. If you don't know Jesus today, this is for you. Trust in him and be healed and be made whole. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you loved us enough to want to heal our, our intimate places where we are broken, where we are hurt. We pray the Lord you would be with us, heal us, put us back again for those of us who are broken. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.